good to be in the house of the Lord again. Good to see you out. Good to be out. I tell you, I appreciate the good Sunday school lesson. I, Lonnie, I think you've done a tremendous job uh, teaching uh, the Word of God about a great high priest. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a great high priest, one that's uh, the mediator between God and man, and we appreciate that. He's mentioned uh, uh, beautiful weather. You couldn't ask for any better weather. And it's uh, dry here. We got a drought going on, I guess. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, down to our house. It, it's very dry. And I had my brother-in-law and his wife come up to see about Wimmy yesterday, and he lives down on the coast of North Carolina. They do, and they're talking about how it's flooding down there. I mean, we're dry, and they're flooding. And uh, if I had a choice of either, I'd better be up here uh, because, uh, but. Uh, the Lord knows what He's doing. And winter is coming on. And when it gets cold, let me remind you, the Bible said that they is treasures in the snow. And when the snow's blowing and you're scrooched up and trying to warm up, remember, there's treasures in the snow. You know, I've thought about that. and I don't know where this is so or not, but I've read where a scientist says that no two snowflakes are exactly alike. Every one's unique. And I can't hardly comprehend that. I'm not saying that's not so. But you get to thinking there's no two human beings alike, are they? Uh, some's almost alike, but and some is a carbon copy. I think about what I heard a man say one time. He said, if there's two just alike, one of them ain't needed. And uh, maybe that's right. I don't know. Have your Bibles. Turn with us to the book of Luke, chapter 15. I want to preach to you a little while. Let me say again, it's good to see you out in the Lord's house. Uh, we could have been anywhere. We could have been in the hospital. We could have been... Uh, uh, we could have been uh, uh, we could have been born in a far country in Haiti, where they been around the house and died uh, with that uh, uh, hurricane that came through the other day. And like Brother Lonnie said, we live in the, uh, the best place, and or we li you folks live close to the best place <laughs> over at Mine Fork, uh, <laughs> because uh, uh, the, you just can't beat these mountains, can you? But we thank the Lord for it. I'm glad I'm born in the United States. I'm just glad I was born uh, in this part of the country. And uh, let us stand as we read God's Word in the book of St. Luke chapter 15. And begin in reading with verse 8. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she leaves one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the uh, angels of God over one sinner uh, that repenteth. Let's pray. Our Father, as we come this morning, we pray, Lord, that your word, our <coughs> uh, Father, Lord, would be your Lord, Lord, that it would go out. And Father, uh, that it would, uh, uh, Lord, that it would pierce our souls. <coughs> Lord, not what I can say, or Lord, not what I can do, but Lord, uh, your strength and your power. Our Father, we pray, God, for these objects of prayer. Lord, that you'll be with everyone that was mentioned. We pray for women tomorrow, God, as she has to go to the doctor. We pray, God, you touch her, and we praise you and thank you for being with her thus far. Our Father, we pray that for this church, this community, our Father, we pray, God, that it would be a light set up here on top of the hill. Father, Lord, where Jesus would be lifted above all things. And God, they could, uh, Father, as to, uh, when they drive by, they'd have a feeling, God, that the Holy Ghost would touch them. Lord, and knowing that this is the house of God, and uh, the Lord Jesus shed His precious blood for the church. And Father, we pray uh, You'll give us a good service. Let us feel like we've been to church this morning when we leave. And what's done, we'll praise You in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I want to talk to you a few minutes about uh, this woman that lost a coin. In Luke 15, uh, here uh, the Bible uh, uh, tells us that Luke was talking about Jesus spoke three parables, the parable of the lost sheep and the shepherd, and the parable of the lost coin, the parable of the lost son. The parable of the lost coin here is, uh, uh, is uh, unique. I believe that uh, we can see the church and we can see ourselves in this. And... Uh, when we look in the Bible, I've often wondered if they wrote another Bible and I was included in there, where would I be? What position would I have? 
Uh, how would I be? Uh, how would I be uh, uh, pictured in, in the Bible? But here, this woman uh, has lost a coin. A coin is a valuable thing. I mean, it was a silver coin. Now you know, silver is uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's not as good as gold. It's not as precious. It's not as uh, uh, costly as gold. But it's a, a costly metal, and they make jewelry out of it, and they make coins out of it. If you've got uh, some silver coins now, dimes or half dollars or silver dollars, and then they're worth more than the face value. And certainly, uh, this coin was worth something. Uh, we look at humanity and we see a lot of uh, humanity. We say they're worth nothing. They're worthless. Uh, but uh, this woman uh, had a coin and, and she lost it. And it was, uh, uh, it was worthless, but it was lost. No matter what it was uh, uh, worth when she had it in her hand, it was worthless when uh, she lost it. A few years ago, I was running a bulldozer and uh, I was building a road through the mountains and knocking trees over and pull, pushing rocks out and moving dirt. And the wallet in my pocket slipped out somehow, went down in that dozer and went on through and I know I covered it up. I never did find it. I had a little money in it, not a lot of money, maybe $100, $150. Had pictures of my wife and my kids and family in there. I meant a lot to me. Had a credit card. I uh, had telephone numbers, my driver's license. It was worth a lot to me, but uh, when it was laying in the dirt and the leaves and covered up, uh, it became worthless. If you ladies, most of you, uh, no doubt, has got a ring on that's married and uh, got an engagement ring or maybe a wedding ring, but uh, it means a lot to you. But if you lost it, it would be worthless. And you see, uh, uh, you say, preacher, I'm not worthless. No, uh, we was all worthless. We was. Uh, uh, we was no good before God saved us and then there was no difference because that uh, we was all in one category. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we can't place a finger in uh, We put people in uh, different decrees. We put people in different uh, categories. The good moral people is better people. <coughs> uh, the almost moral people is uh, almost good and uh, the bad people is really bad but uh, you know it's hard for us to comprehend uh, that when God's put us together, I mean he said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and then we have nothing to boast about. Uh, before we're saved we're all in the same uh, category. Uh, but when you're lost you're worthless. You're worthless to the kingdom of God. Uh, you're worthless to the cause of Christ. You can uh, you can uh, uh, get baptized, you can join the church, you can uh, turn over a new leaf, you can quit drinking, cut your hair off, quit watching television, uh, doing all of these things, and uh, still you're worthless in the sight of God. Uh, what makes you what you are uh, right now is what Jesus done uh, on the inside. But notice that, I want you to notice this coin, I was lost in the house. Uh, the Bible said uh, that she began to sweep the house. It was lost for her uh, that it was uh, findable. It was redeemable. Uh, she could find it in the house. I mean, when I lost my wallet and then, uh, uh, and then uh, there's no way I don't think I could have found it. Uh, but if I'd lost it in the house, I could have turned up everything. I, uh, well, we all lose things in the house. Uh, we all uh, 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 lose things and then uh, maybe we'll find them then or maybe later. Uh, but it's all findable. And you know, that's what God done to humanity. Uh, there is not one out there. The Bible said He is able to save. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, uh, even to the uttermost, able to uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel. What God done, I was put humanity. And He said, over there in 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verse 9, He talks about how that, uh, how, who's not going to enter the kingdom of heaven? And he enumerates. He starts enumerating uh, the murderers, the idolaters, and the fornicators, and the effeminate, and, and goes on down. And then he said in the next verse, and he said, and such were some of you, uh, but now are you washed? I mean, you're cleaned up. Uh, he took that precious blood and washed our sin away and cleaned us up. And when he talks about us being washed, you know why you wash something? Uh, is because it separates the dirt. 
uh, and the filth away from the garment. And when He washed us in His blood, He separated the sin and the ungodliness <coughs> and uh, the corruption from us. It separated it, uh, uh, us from that and made us children of God. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I mean, she lost it in a house. God put it all of them together. I've got a, 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 a pup. It's just about four months old and it's a herding a stock. It's a part Australian kelpie and part border collie. And I can turn my chickens out. i got chickens and uh, it's out of instinct. He'll go over there and he'll get all them chickens. Uh, he'll herd them up. He'll go around them. It's like you've seen sheep dogs herd sheep. He'll herd them sh uh, chickens up and put them in a group there and they'll sit down and they'll watch and if one gets the tarp out, uh, he'll put it back in there. And you say, how long does it do that? I would lay get tired of it and he'll jump on him and flog him around and he'll, uh, he'll have to leave. But uh, that's what God done. He heard it all of humanity uh, in one group and said all of sin. And, uh, but I want you to know all are redeemable. All can be saved. Uh, we hear preachers, we hear people say, uh, because of this and that in somebody's life, uh, they can't be saved. But I want to report to you today uh, that the Bible said, for whoso will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Right. I mean, it don't make any difference what you've done. It don't make any difference where you're at. Uh, he said, I want you to come. Uh, they is salvation for all. Um, you, you, you might differ with me, but uh, she lost his coin in the house. It was time to vote. I don't give up on that person there. It may be somebody uh, that you've ever, and, and actually, I forgive up. I forgive up on people. I've prayed for people, and I've prayed for people, and uh, and uh, and actually, I just quit praying for them. I, I never said it, but I guess what I thought was uh, that I was going to, uh, they, they're not going to get saved. You ever, uh, did you ever think about that? Did you ever have that on your mind and you just get made up in your mind? Uh, they ain't never going to do any better. Uh, but there was a lady in the church that I pastored here and she prayed for her husband 23 years. Can you imagine 23 years? She said she prayed for him. And he wouldn't go to church. He wouldn't get saved. He, uh, he'd done a lot of things. I wouldn't even go into that. I went for 23 years. And people had just about given up on him. <coughs> One morning, and I'm not bad. I don't go and and uh, uh, and and pull it. People try to get him to order. One morning, uh, God just uh, uh, dealt with my heart, and I just walked back. You're in the outer call, and uh, the piano was a playing, and uh, and uh, folks had their head bowed, and I just walked back and asked him. I said, "Wouldn't you like to get right with the Lord this morning?" He said, "I would." And he came up for 23. I mean, folks had give up on him. His family had give up on him. But God hadn't give up on him. His coin was lost in the house. Not only that, uh, uh, it was lost in the darkness. I mean, she lit a candle to try and find it. Notice with me over in the book of 1 Peter, chapter uh, uh, 2. <coughs> you know, the Bible said men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Darkness is never godly in the Bible. But in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, notice this, who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I mean, we was in darkness. We couldn't see far out there. You know, uh, you wonder why people don't get saved. You wonder why people go on in their life the way they are and, 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 and they have no uh, acknowledgement of God in their life or uh, the hereafter. They're in darkness. They can't see out there. They can't see what's coming. If a person could sit down and see uh, what the ultimate... Uh, uh, thing is in life and then I don't see how they can keep from getting saved. I mean if they realized what they was going to do uh, and where they was going, what was going to happen and then how could they go on and on and on. But they're in darkness. This world is in darkness and they'll not 
I get saved until the marvelous light of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, I comes and puts them under old time Holy Ghost conviction. Now we've got that away from that in America in our churches. I, but I want you to know our folks don't get saved unless the Spirit of God deals with them. And Jesus said, no man coming in me other than a father except by me and no man comes to me except the Spirit draws him. And it's, man's not capable of making up his mind. Man's not capable of uh, uh, searching for God. People say, well, I search for God. And I thought, no, I wouldn't hear it. Uh, and, and I'm not uh, talking like the primitive Baptists. they got a belief and they believe in predestination. They believe you're either born uh, to go to heaven or go to hell. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, I don't believe that. No, sir. But they say that uh, when you get saved, you've already got eternal life. You're already saved. And when God saves you, uh, He just goes over and turns the switch on and turns the light on in your life and you see your salvation. And I've heard, uh, 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 I've heard uh, uh, one, and, and I, I like to listen to them sometimes. Boy, all they preach on is the grace of God. And they've got a choir. They don't believe in music in the church, but uh, they've got a choir that would just, uh, uh, that would just, uh, it will uh, it'll bless you today. But they say it's like going into a room of darkness. And the furniture's already there. And you turn the light on and you see but I say today, Peter said here, you was called out of darkness into light. You don't go in. And man is, uh, let me say, man's not predestinated to go to hell. Uh, I don't believe God predestinated anybody to go to hell. He don't have to predestinate them. All he has to do is leave them alone. Right. And man will go to hell. I mean, uh, he'll go. If he don't accept Jesus Christ, he'll go. But she lost her coin in the darkness. <laughs> this world's in darkness. Your people that you want to see saved, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, they don't want to hear it. They're in darkness is the reason. Not only was, uh, 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 was uh, she losing in darkness, she, she lit a candle and turned the light on and tried to find it. It was lost in the dirt. It was lost in the, uh, uh, in, in the very field of the house. She got her broom and the Bible won't say anything about a broom. That's the only way I know you can sweep. She got a broom and she began to sweep the house. She couldn't find it with a candle. And she began to sweep. And uh, you know what a broom will do? A broom will get down in the crevices and cracks and in the corners and it'll bring her down. And she began to sweep. You know what God's grace will do? Uh, he'll get down in the corners. He'll get down in the uh, uh, he, he'll get down in the field. He will uh, get down in the crevices. How uh, God has brought uh, people out. I can give you illustration after illustration of how God brought people out of uh, of, out of sin and and, and ungodliness and uh, saved them and um, uh, made great people out of them. Uh, you know, if you're reading the Bible, and I read this sometimes and pretty often, and I see where my standing is. The Bible said that God, uh, he, he don't use the uh, He don't use the great things of the world. Not many men uh, that are mighty are called. Not many are chosen. Uh, not many that uh, that uh, has uh, a lot of not. But God chose the foolish things of the world uh, to confound the wise. Did you realize that uh, the the wise of the world, they can't figure out how that a person can uh, just completely change. And let me say, I've seen humanity enough uh, that you can't just make a complete turnaround and go the other way uh, without some help. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of help out there. There's rehab places. There's Alcohol Anonymous for the alcohol. But I'll tell you, uh, if you ever get the saved of the grace of God, if Jesus ever comes into your heart and changes that heart, you've got to have a change of heart uh, before you can have a change of mind. Right. I mean, you've got to have a change that heart. Uh, we was talking to, uh, this week, I was talking to a man, and he was talking about... Uh, about having a heart operation. And I said, well, uh, God's been operating on hearts for uh, for years and years. He said, I think he'd take out that stony heart. He'd put in a heart of flesh. This woman had lost her coin uh, in the dirt. Men and women are lost uh, in the filth of the earth. And uh, and they enjoy it. I was, uh, uh, I was listening to Ralph Sexton preach on the television this morning. 
And he's talking about this having a revival, a tent revival out at Robbinsville. And he said there was four teenagers there that had been completely abandoned out of their parents. Because of meth and drugs and alcohol, said they was with 14-year-old girls. Some of you may have heard it. I said that was an altar of her night. And she got saved and she said her parents, uh, she got up and there was a note in the house. And her parents had left and here she was, stranded, abandoned. And why did they do that? Because of the, uh, of the, uh, the filth of the earth had got a hold of her. And got a hold of their bodies. And the filth of the earth is, uh, he will destroy you. The sin will destroy you. He'll take you down. He'll keep it taking you down, down. It'll destroy your body. It will, and I know people, and you probably know people. And I'm not a, a putting them down. I'm telling you the truth. There was a, a lady that I know, and she was a, a, she was a real good looking woman. And I mean, and if I called her name, some of you might know her. They, she was from over at Seven Mile Ridge, and and uh, she was she got out of me. And here she was. She probably thirty five year old, and she looked sixty five. Her teeth had rotted out, or she had sores where the, the meth. I don't know how it does. I, I'm not real familiar with drugs. But it was destroying her body. It finally destroyed her because that it caused her to do an awful thing. She's in prison today. And you see, she was found in the tilt of the earth. Hey, uh, people make fun of you. They, uh, they laugh at you for living for God. And, and uh, they call you holy rollers and Bible thumpers. And that's all right. Because we got a better place to go. Right. And I'll tell you, we're not saved today because we are who we are. Uh, because of what goodness we've done, we are saved. Uh, sitting here today, uh, going to heaven because of what Jesus done for us on Calvary. I uh, shed His blood and come to us individually one day and said, I want you. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, that ought to make us feel like something. Uh, because, you know, uh, just like over at the pool of Bethesda, uh, they was the blind, them and the uh, folks that was there, the hearted, the maimed, and the crippled, and they was waiting for their trouble into the water. And they was laying all around, but they was an old boy had been there for 38 years. And, uh, and, and every year he'd come back, and he said somebody would step down before him. He didn't have anybody. I'd have put him in that water. Uh, because the Bible said that once a year, an uh, angel come down, trouble the water, and whosoever uh, stepped in was cleansed and healed of whatsoever disease that he had. He didn't have anybody to put him in that water. But one day, Jesus came through. And no doubt, he had to step over some people. He had to go around some people. Excuse me. Pardon me. And he went out to that person individually. And he said, will that be made whole? He said, I have no man to put me in the water. And Jesus said, take up thy bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say, well, what a miracle it was. It is no different than it was in the night that you got saved, the day that you got saved. I mean, of all of the millions of people that God could have saved, He come to you individually, personally, and it was just you and Him. Right. And He thought that much of you. And he come down to your place. Man, I tell you, we're something. I mean, uh, I've never been excited about uh, the president visiting with the president. I've never been excited about uh, uh, visiting with uh, uh, the governor. Uh, in fact, uh, we had a mayor a few years ago. Burns was a friend of mine. I liked him. Uh, but I wasn't excited about him uh, visiting with him because he is the mayor. Uh, but I got excited about uh, Jesus coming and visiting with me one night. Because that he come for a purpose. This woman lost her coin in the dirt. Uh, in 1 John chapter 5, you remember this scripture. You highlight it. If you highlight scripture in your Bible, uh, it says the whole world life in wickedness. That meant me. That meant Lonnie. That meant my wife. That meant everyone in here. Uh, because they was none good. And if there's anything good about us, 
It's what the Lord done for us. Right. Galatians 2.20 said, uh, the Apostle Paul said, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives within me. In the night life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, I'm alive. This body's a functioning. I but it's not the old man Paul. It's Jesus that lives on the inside. He said, if there's anything good about me, I hiss from him. It's not about me. And so it is with all of us. We are drug out of the dirt. We are swept out of the crash. Uh, we are illuminated uh, by the light of the Holy Spirit of God. And here this woman, she lost her coin. And she lost it in shame. They, uh, in biblical days, a, a husband would give his wife, and, and, uh, and I heard Adrian Rogers talking about this, and he'd give his wife ten coins, and then have a hole in it, and they'd run a ribbon through it, and you've seen pictures, I guess, of Jewish women are wearing that around their head or around their face. And the husband's initials would be uh, would be uh, initialed in, and it showed, it told, it's sort of like a wedding ring that uh, folks uh, wear today, and that showed the faithfulness of the husband to the wife, and the faithfulness of the wife to the husband. But you know, if that wife got adultery, she got out, committed adultery. Uh, in that middle coin, they took that coin away. And everybody that saw her, I could see that she'd been uh, committing adultery. And it brought shame. Folks, listen. We were shameful. I mean, we was lost in shame. They, if I had a screen here, and, and, and I know there's a, a, a lot of good moral people here this morning, but Still, if I could put your entire life in the things uh, that you do, every one of us here today has got things that we're ashamed of. And if I had a projector that I could uh, put them on the wall on a screen here, and then you'd be ashamed of <coughs> You might say, well, preacher, it's not a thing uh, in my life that I'm ashamed of. Well, uh, God bless you. I tell you, uh, uh, I want you to sit up here with me. <laughs> I want some of that to rub off of me. But all of us got shame. We were saved out of shame. Mm -hmm. He spent the shame for us. Did you realize that the Bible said he endured the cross with joy while despising the shame? You know what they done to him? Not only did they beat him, not only did they uh, torture him, not only did they, I mean, they done <coughs> terrible things to him. <coughs> But I believe the worst thing that they done to him to humiliate him, uh, they stripped him naked and put him on that cross. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've talked to people, I've never been to the Holy Land, but I've talked to people that's been, and they said at Calvary, uh, where that they crucified Christ foot and on the very top of a hill, I always thought it was, but it wasn't. And it was a, a, it was a, 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 a kind of a mound, a kind of a mountain, but the road coming around. And they stripped Christ naked, him beaten and smitten, and hung him on that cross. And you know what the Bible said in the book of Matthew? They sat down. This shows the depravity of man. They sat down to watch him die. Right. When, you, when a person was hung or a person is executed, when they're executed, uh, the crowd usually disperses. But you know what they done? They sat there just to wait. For Jesus to die. He took that shame. He took my shame and your shame and he took it to the cross. He stood at the cross as us that we could stand before God as him. And that shame that he bore with our own Calvary will never have to experience shame before God. The Bible said in the book of Jude, he said that uh, one of these days, he's going to present us faultless. Can you imagine that? As sorry and ungodly as I am. Brother Lonnie's talking about 
uh, about him sinning when, and, and folks, I'll tell you, we don't like to admit it, uh, but we're all, uh, we're all sinners and we still have that nature and we still sin and, and the Bible says if we have no sin, we're, and I didn't say this, you, you uh, raise it out if you want to, we're alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible said that it's just plain as day. And if you don't like it, you can cut it out or whatever, but that don't change things. We have that old nature. We have that old nature. And it's going to be with us till we die. We have that temper that rises up. We have that temptation that comes to us. But you know what? One of these days, He's going to present us to God the Father. Perfect. Right. Spotless. As though, I mean, we are justified. You know our standing right now and and, and I'm not getting into something else, but you know our standing with God right now? We are justified. The Bible said we are justified. That word justification means that, uh, that we're not a... Uh, it, it don't mean that just that we're not a sinner, but as though we had never been a sinner, as though we'd never sinned. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Because of what Jesus did. Brought us out, this woman lost her coin and shame. But you know what? She found it. Bible said when she found it, she, uh, she had to tell somebody about it. You know how it was when you got saved? You had to tell somebody about it. I mean, you say, preacher, it never done me that way. You might not have go back and get another deal because uh, uh, everybody I've ever talked to uh, that really I felt like and, and what I feel like they're saved not, I don't mean they're saved uh, but they wanted to tell somebody right. I remember that I was uh, I was uh, well I was married and had a great big young when I got saved and, uh, before I got married and then I was just a least bit rowdy and, and that, my neighbor down there uh, he uh he was a uh, 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 he was a religious man, and he went to the high school and went to the uh, church that heard W. Armstrong. Probably none of you don't remember him, uh, but he was a uh, he he was a nut boy, and he went to that church, and uh, I've had a man come up and ask me, said, "Are you going to be out anywhere today?" I said, "Well, not as far as I know. Why?" He said, I just want to get my mules out on the road, and I didn't want to. Uh, if you just going to be out, I'd sure he might, I would. And uh, it was like that. And I figured he'd be the first one that one road that I got saved. And I went down, and he was over the mailbox to get the mail, and I parked, and I got out. I said, Ben, I'll tell you something. I said, God saved me last night. He said, you know, I used to be a hypocrite just like you. I great I mean... He'd changed over. If you don't know who Herbert W. Armstrong was, he said you had to keep the law. You had to keep the Sabbath. You had to go back under a lot of Old Testament uh, uh, traditions to be saved. And, 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 and I'm not going to get into that. But he had he, uh, he'd, he'd got into that religion. And he thought because just that I said God saved me. That I was playing the hypocrite. Hey, it's just as simple. When God saves you, it's just as simple. It don't take no doctor of theology to figure it out. You know what God does. And I, and I don't know what all goes on, but I know I, when you repent and believe in Him and trust in what He done, I, that He changes you. And there's a new man or a new woman on the inside. And it, it, it don't have to be a big thing. God just comes and Saves you. I've seen people get saved and shout all over the house. I remember one Sunday there's a girl who went off to college and her grandmother came to our church and she went off to college and one Sunday morning she came and she sat down and, and, and I could see her face was troubled all through our service and I gave the altar call. Boy, uh, she uh, hit the aisle and got in that altar and, 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 and she got saved. I really believe that she got saved that morning. She got up, she hugged everybody in church. It was about a hundred people, I guess, there. Or maybe more that morning. And long as she went and she hugged every one of them. She'd hug four or five and she'd chat a while. And then she'd hug four or five more and she'd chat a while. Well, not everybody don't do that. 
I've seen some people uh, get saved and just get up and be as humble and say, I appreciate God to save me. And their life 10 years later was just the same as that in the chapel. You see, God doesn't work. It's not always a, uh, it's not always a big racket. And I don't mean that irreverent. But you remember Elijah was down in a cave one time on the mountain. The Bible said that. It was a great wind come through. He wasn't, God wasn't in that. And a great fire and an earthquake. And God wasn't in that. But in a still, small voice, God said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah, what do I say? Folks, listen. This woman lost her coin, but she found it. She lit that candle. She swept. She got down in the cracks, the corners, swept under the bed, no doubt. And she found her coin. And she rejoiced. She went to her neighbors and said, Rejoice with me, for I found that which was lost. When God found you and He found me, and it wasn't that he didn't know where we was at. It was the reason we was lost. We didn't know where we was at. We just didn't realize it, but God saved us. Life ever had to be bad for a minute. Everybody closed.